How has biomimicry transformed my life? I first encountered the term hearing a talk that Janine Benyus gave about how cities could function like forests. And I knew that I, I had to know more. So I started looking for where can I learn more about biomimicry? What can I do? Are there courses to take? Are there programs in this? The biomimicry certificate and master's program at Arizona State University were the only named biomimicry program I could find, especially that was going to be accessible to me. So I jumped into that, not really knowing what I was going to get into. As I spent more time going through the ASU program, that transformation has really been a deepening. Part technical training and design education, part leadership development, but also part spiritual quest. You know, it's like going from entering into the water. You know, I love to snorkel. I spend a lot of time in the ocean, so I love to snorkel and free dive. It's like going from snorkeling at the surface to really being able to dive down and stay underwater for a minute, for two minutes, right? At, at 40 feet, at 50 feet. Right? And you start to feel like you're becoming part of this oceanscape that you're in. Not just observing it, but really becoming a part of it. And for me, that was my biomimicry journey and transformation was really that deepening. The biomimicry professional program calls those the six week long components of that program immersions. And for me, each one became kind of a deeper dive into my relationship with nature, into my design practice, into you know, a whole new field of possibilities. When you can get down underwater and spend time observing what happens, you realize there's so much more going on than you could see from the surface. And that connection to the sacred, really that reconnect component of biomimicry became an essential part for me. I've always maintained close connections with nature and the ocean, but, but really this deepening of that relationship, not just enjoying being outside, not just in wow, nature is so beautiful, but really understanding nature as source in Hawaiian, in the Hawaiian language, as kumu, which is also our word for teacher. So the word for source and the word for teacher are the same. And nature as kumu was something that was really significant and important in my own journey. When I first signed up for the ASU program and applied for the BPRO, I was leading a center called the Luke Center for Public Service at Punahou School here in Honolulu. I know I'm not the only one, but I, it maybe should be said that like starting this program, going on this biomimicry journey uh, is a good way to end up quitting your current job. <laughs> what does my life look like now? And what does my daily life look like? Now, you know, none of my days look the same. I spend some of my days working with an organization called Malamo Monolua. And we're working really hard to protect the near shore ecosystem and coral reef that are off the southeast coast of Oahu here. And working with the Coral Resilience Lab at the University of Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology and a group called Kuleana Coral to figure out how to support our reefs in becoming more resistant to climate change and increasing ocean temperatures. So I might be on a boat going over to the lab one day. I might be out working with a group of students, removing invasive algae, what we call limu, from the bay on another day. I have an exciting project coming up called Malama Mano, which is care for the shark, integrating ancestral intelligence with artificial intelligence. So we're using some computer models, machine learning models to count and identify shark species in Papahanao Mokuakea, which is the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands Marine Monument. Another big part of what I do is work with an organization called Purple Maya Foundation. It's really how I got introduced to this notion of indigenous innovation, place-based design and innovation that felt really resonant with biomimicry. I have a design and innovation practice which is called Pacific Blue Studios. And we're hoping to create our first kind of full-time youth studio in the fall where we invite about a dozen teenagers from across the island to participate in essentially looking for opportunities to regenerate, looking for opportunities to innovate and supporting those communities and doing it in ways that are accessible to them, relevant to them, um, and also relevant to these young people. So really building up their own competencies and capabilities and providing them with a kind of education that they might otherwise not be able to find in schools. So yeah, 
the, the future of Pacific Blue Studios is looking uh, bright and exciting. And, and I'm definitely thankful that my life took this turn to be, you know, I love that I get to be more of a, a forest bird or fish on the reef than what felt like another cog in the wheel. So, yeah, that's been a blessing. And I'm excited because I, I can't say for sure what, what the future is going to look like. And I think that's honest. And, and that's the reality for all of us. Things are far more uncertain than we'd like to admit and design for. Creating spaces where we can live a little bit better in the midst of that uncertainty and that we can tune in to the possibilities and not just tune in to the one thing that we think we're supposed to be moving towards. Um, that's, that's exciting to me. Thank you.